Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Oasis Saturday night service. We're so glad that you have joined us. If you're in person or via our live stream, you are most welcome here. Um, I'm going, we are in a new series today. Uh, we're going to be talking about the faithfulness of God. And as I read our call to worship, I'd like to invite you to stand. Uh, our call to worship is from Deuteronomy 7, 9, which says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. So I, my prayer for all of us is that we would be people who love our God and keep his commandments in spite of whatever difficulties we might be facing. We know that our God is faithful and more faithful than we could possibly imagine or comprehend. And so I'd like to invite you to join us as we sing together about the faithfulness of God. at first light Resting in your goodness when raging waters roar I'll trust you in the calm or in the storm I found peace in the overwhelming You speak life in the dead of Faithful God, faithful Father, rushing like a river, your faithfulness and love are flowing from your heart into the world. Healing for the nations, your glory fills the earth, restore.
but now I see twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood His mercy reigns an ending love amazing seated. It's good to be with you this afternoon for Oasis Contemporary Worship at Zion Lutheran Church in Fort Myers, Florida. And a special welcome to those of you who are either with us uh, in real time on our Facebook feed or are watching and worshiping with us later. We're glad you can be part of our gathering here. If you're viewing online and you'd like to know what's going on at Oasis, Every week we put out an e-blast which uh, talks about the service that's coming up and also has other information about ministry here at Oasis and at Zion. To get on that list, you simply email info at zionfm.org and we'll put you on the distribution list. If you have a prayer request or Thanksgiving that you would like us to add to our prayers, uh, you can do that by sending that to me via email at pastorhank at zionfm.org and we'll include that prayer in the next service. Those of you who are with us in person on the end chair of the aisle, of the chair by the aisle, how to say that, I guess. The, the, there's a sign-in folder. And if you would please uh, take that, and if you're here for the first time, uh, fill that out for us. Otherwise, if this is your second or third or whatever time, just simply put your name down so that we can know who is here with us today. We'll appreciate that. Inside the folder, in one of the pockets, is a prayer request form. And if you have a prayer request for Thanksgiving, um, please use this to fill that out, and we'll add it to the prayers. You get that to us by simply putting it in the offering plate a little later in the service. Today we're going to begin a series of four messages, as Leah mentioned, on I want to believe, but. We'll look at four misconceptions of God in this month. These misconceptions keep some people from believing. 
And our first misunderstanding, which we'll talk about this afternoon, is a goosebumps God. We'll explore how feelings are involved with our faith. We begin by praying. Almighty Father, you have promised to never leave us nor forsake us. When we slide into feeling that you are absent from our lives, send your spirit to renew our faith in Jesus, your Son, who is Emmanuel, our God with us. Amen. Trusting God depends on the facts we have received in the Bible, but our faith also involves our feelings. Listen as the Old Testament poet King David writes in Psalm 102 about his feeling that God has turned away from him and is no longer present in his life. Psalm 102. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my plea. Don't turn away from me in my time of distress. Bend down to listen and answer me quickly when I call to you. For my days disappear like smoke and my bones burn like red hot coals. My heart is sick, withered like grass, and I have lost my appetite. My life passes as swiftly as the evening shadows. I am withering away like grass. Before Jesus returned to his Father by ascending, he takes two steps. First, he commissions the apostles to spread the good news. Second, he promises that he will always be with them as they disciple the nations in his name. Matthew 28. Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go and disciple all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Do you know someone who says, I want to believe in God, but then that person goes on to tell you about something that happened, some reason, some obstacle, some hurdle, which keeps them from totally believing. Today we begin a series of four messages which explore reasons which people give for not believing in God. As we look at these objections, we'll see people are not rejecting the true God, or what they are rejecting is a distorted view of who they think God is. But it's not an accurate view of God. As we do this beginning, we talk about the goosebumps God. As in, I want to believe in God, but I don't feel him. Pastor Greg Groeschel tells of such a conversation with a 16-year-old girl full of tears as she told him, Pastor, my dad died of brain cancer. I was so close to my daddy. My mom doesn't believe. I'm hurting. So I drive myself to church every single week because I need something spiritually. But it's just not happening for me. I tried to read the Bible, but I don't understand it. I try to sing the songs. Everyone else seems to feel something. I feel numb. That teenager's experience reminds us that we won't always feel God's presence. If you're like me, the times when I believe God is present in worship, or reading the Bible, or serving others because I'm a follower of Jesus, those times usually feel like any other time. So when we do feel 
God is present, we may say, I get goosebumps. I felt moved. Saying that we have goosebumps indicate we felt a physical reaction to something happening. Goosebumps are the results of tiny muscles flexing in the skin. The result, hairs stand up. I've had goosebumps in worship when a choir sang an anthem which touched me deeply. But being moved also can be shown in other ways, like tearing up. I remember when the hymn, For All the Saints Who From Their Labors Rest, was sung at my father's funeral. I got so choked up I couldn't sing. Months later, when we sang that hymn again, I got choked up again. The music and words connected me to dad's death and my hope of reunion with him at the resurrection of the dead on the last day. But what about those times when choirs sing and I don't feel moved? Do I love my dad any less because I now can sing for all the saints and not get choked up? What if I don't feel God's presence in worship? Does that mean God is absent? Not necessarily. We can say this because authors in the Bible write about God's absence. The Old Testament shepherd and then king, David, cries out at the start of Psalm 13, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? The image of God hiding his face from us is helpful. David is see, saying he can't see God. In other words, he has to trust that God is there, even though it doesn't feel like it. Like David, we can have times in our lives when we feel God is nowhere to be seen. We can feel that way for a number of reasons. We may not feel God's presence because we want a dramatic sign. We're like the driver of a car who whizzed past a Lutheran church on a country road. Two congregation leaders had just put up a sign that read, the end is near, turn around before it's too late. When the driver saw the sign, he leaned out his window and yelled, leave me alone, you religious nuts. After they heard screeching tires and a big splash, the first Lutheran turned to the second Lutheran and said, do you think the sign should just say, bridge out ahead? <laughs> People in Jesus' day wanted a dramatic sign. The sixth chapter of John's Gospel tells how Jesus fed 5,000 people with only five small barley loaves and two small fishes. When Jesus says he can do miracles like this because God has sent him, the people reply, what miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? They weren't alone in wanting a dramatic sign from Jesus. In the rock musical Jesus Christ Superstar, King Herod sings to Jesus, Prove to me that you're no fool. Walk across my swimming pool. We may not believe in God because we insist on a sign, a miracle, as proof. We may not feel God's presence because we have hardened hearts. It's easy for our heart, which is how the Bible talks about our relationship with God, to be affected by temptations in this world. That happened when I watched a movie called The American President. The film was building to a key romantic scene. The handsome widower president of the United States, Michael Douglas, was falling in love with the pert, cute lobbyist, Annette Benning. The background music was just right as he invited her to stay overnight with him. And she did. As I thought about it, I realized that even though what these two consenting adults were doing felt right to me, according to the movie's plot, it was wrong. They were breaking the Sixth Commandment about adultery. So, so why didn't it feel wrong to me? Because, as one preacher has said, we sometimes slip into what we could call sanitized sins. 
Sin doesn't seem to be so bad when nobody seems bothered by it. But when sin gets accepted, God knows he isn't welcome. Jesus quotes the Old Testament prophet Isaiah to describe the situation this way. This people's heart has become hardened. When our hearts are hardened, when we do not resist sin, not just accepting adultery, but gossiping or fudging on the truth or a whole bunch of other so-called lesser sins, Sin has wormed its way into our lives. God is shoved out, so we probably won't feel God's presence. Our desire to feel God's presence is an important fact, but it also reflects something else which is just as important. Feelings are part of being human. When I first stepped inside the castle church in Wittenberg, Germany, where Martin Luther began the Reformation, I didn't consciously say to myself, I'm going to feel awe at where I'm standing. The awe at actually being in the birthplace of renewal of faith, which has shaped millions of believers through the centuries, just happened. I still find it hard to put that feeling into words. Feelings are part of how God has wired you and me as his human creations. In recent years, we've learned how it's good to be in touch with our feelings. Knowing what triggers a feeling can be very helpful. That's because God also has created each of us with a mind and a will. Our minds can evaluate how to act on our feelings. Then our wills decide what we will do. But because you and I are imperfect people living in an imperfect world, simply following our feelings can lead to sin and evil. We don't need to let our feelings rule our lives. We need to use our minds and use our wills so that we will follow Jesus and live in ways which please him. Yet God does want us to have feelings which enjoy his blessings and are thankful for them. So we can look for ways in which God touches us with his grace and gives us joy in this life. Searching for those blessings builds on the fact that God is always with us. If any nation had a reason to wonder if God was absent, it was the Old Testament Israelites. God had punished them for their perpetual sins by allowing them to be conquered. Ten of the twelve Israelite tribes were carried away into captivity. They were absorbed by other nations and are lost in history. But God still wanted to be present with the surviving two tribes. That's why he assures them through the prophet Jeremiah, if you look for me wholeheartedly, You will find me, says the Lord. St. Matthew highlights how Jesus fulfilled this promise, which is also for us. Matthew writes that Jesus is born to be Emmanuel. This Hebrew name means God with us. There are at least three ways in which we can know that God is present with us. God is present with us in the everyday things of life. There's a flip side to our taking sin for granted, we heard about earlier. And that other side is that we overlook indications of God's presence, which we see every day. These are not dramatic miracles that cause goosebumps, for which some people yearn. But these are small signs, ways in which the Lord blesses us. On my morning walks, I usually see dogs that are lovingly carried, or once in a while, they're even walking by themselves. God is present in the lives of their humans to bring joy through these pets. Our great-grandparents would have marveled at being able to FaceTime another person on a digital device. God was present with all the minds who invented the components which made the device possible. Sometimes our enjoying the everyday blessings even can bring goosebumps like viewing a particularly beautiful sunrise or sunset on Fort Myers Beach. Goosebumps are not necessary to know that God is present, but they are a bonus when they happen. In addition, we can know that God is present 
because he has chosen you and me. The Lord is with us because we are precious to him. In the movie Toy Story, Buzz Lightyear is an action figure who faces the fact that he is really not a space hero. Buzz is only a toy astronaut. He says, I'm just a stupid little insignificant toy. But then he looks at the bottom of his shoes. There he sees in permanent ink the name of the little boy to whom he belongs. Buzz now knows that that little boy has chosen him. And Buzz feels important. You and I can feel important and know that God is present because he has chosen us. In baptism, God reaches into our lives and says, you are my son, you are my daughter, you are my chosen one. God has done more than write his name on the bottom of our shoes. In three different books of the Bible, the Lord makes this promise. I will never leave you nor forsake you. We can know God is present in our lives. And he is present because he has chosen us. Another important way for God to be involved in our lives is through the scriptures. God is present in his written word. A staff person for a Bible society in Africa was selling copies of the New Testament. One man said he was interested, but he wanted to use the Bible's pages as paper for rolling his cigarettes. The staffer said, I'll make you a deal. I'll give you the New Testament if you promise to read every page before you smoke it. They shook hands on the unusual arrangement. Years later, that staffer met the smoker. He said, I smoked Matthew. I smoked Mark. I smoked Luke. But when I got to John 3.16, I couldn't smoke anymore. My life was changed from that moment. I have experienced how a Bible verse provided a clear direction for my life. In one case, I had read that verse dozens of times while visiting patients in the hospital. But then, one day, I realized its words spelled out my purpose as a pastor. Years later, I was doing a Bible word study. When I came to a verse in the Psalms, it was an aha moment. I still use those words as my life verse. Now, I didn't have goosebumps either time, but I believe the Holy Spirit was present and at work guiding me. Friends have told me of similar experiences as they read the scriptures in their daily devotions. God is present for us when we read and take to heart his written word. This blessing connects us to one more way in which we can know the Lord is with us. When we believe that God is present with us, no matter how we feel, no matter what disappointment or discouragement or even disaster is happening in our lives, we are blessed with faith. That is the ultimate answer for when we wonder why we don't feel moved by worship or get goosebumps for other ways in which God is involved in our lives. Because faith does not depend on feelings. Faith depends on our relationship with a loving God who has chosen us as his daughters and sons. Feelings are not faith. Faith is trusting in a Savior who was all alone on the cross, dying to pay the price for our sins so that you and I are forgiven and have eternal life. Faith is trusting in a Savior we cannot see, we cannot hear, whose work in our lives we often cannot feel. But like a parent who faithfully sits at the bedside of a sleeping, sick child, God is always here for us. And sometimes, God will let us have goosebumps. Remember that teenage girl who asked her pastor why she couldn't feel God like she thought everyone else did? He said to her, I promise you will find God. Besides, you're the most determined girl I've ever met. She stopped and said, what did you call me? 
The pastor replied, I said you're so determined I can see it in your eyes. The girl started tearing up and said, I can't believe what you just said. My daddy used to call me his determined little angel. The pastor smiled and said, by any chance, do you sense God is with us right now? And she broke down as they hugged and prayed. We cannot depend on our emotions when it comes to the value of reading scripture or praying or being in worship with other Christians or believing in the true God. We can see God at work as we look around at his blessings. We can know we are precious to God because he has chosen us to be his daughters and sons. Most of all, we can trust in the promises of God who loved us enough to give up his only son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but has eternal life. Then, if we have goosebumps in realizing and appreciating God at work in our lives, that's a bonus. Amen. As we sing the next song, the offerings will be gathered. If you have a prayer request or thanksgiving, please use that blue form and put it in the plate. And if you've not yet completed the sign-in folder, please also do that at this time. statement of faith today is the Apostles' Creed. It will be projected on the screens. Please stand as we say it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We have just gathered our offerings here among our in-person worshipers. If you're watching online, you might well want to be part of this offering too. And so that can be done either by mailing offerings to the Zion Church office or by using electronic fund transfer. However we give our offerings and whenever we do it, this is part of our act of worship. And so we dedicate them. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have two prayer requests that came in earlier before the service. <coughs> Excuse me. Pastor Paul Weber, who has been a, a preacher here, one of our, as Pastor Curtis likes to call them, neighbors from the north, uh, will have ear, ear surgery on this coming Wednesday, and so we include him. And we also pray for Don Schultz, the, the brother of Heidi Yankovic, who is home from the hospital. Uh, then in the prayer requests from the congregation today, we have an anonymous request for, to pray for those who have fallen from the faith. And Linda and George Semenek ask that we pray for safe travel for them in coming days. We come before our gracious Father in prayer. Loving Father, before you created the universe, we were already in your thoughts. You had chosen us to be your people, awed and humbled by that fact of faith. We pray today for your people in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Send your spirit that we treasure the unity you give to us because we are part of your family, the church. Lead us when we disagree politically or in other ways to speak the truth in love. Above all, lead us to treat the other person as someone so loved by Jesus that he willingly died for them. We ask you to be with our friends, relatives, or acquaintances with medical concerns. As they go through this time of testing, guide them to lean upon your goodness and mercy. Lead them to know that they are remembered, including Paul, Don, and others whom we now name before you in the silence of our hearts. Bring healing to those afflicted with the coronavirus. Protect everyone who provides medical care for COVID patients. Give us patience as we seek to be concerned for the health of others as well as our own. Bless those who research, test, and produce vaccines and other medicines. We seek your strength also for those who battle addictions or deal with chronic pain or discomfort in body, mind, or spirit. Let them know you are with them. We pray, too, for those who have fallen from the faith. Be with them, Heavenly Father, and help us as we continue to love them, that our care for them might prompt them to re-examine what they believe about you. Because you are a welcoming God, we ask your blessing upon guests in our worship this weekend at Zion, both here at Oasis this afternoon and tomorrow morning in the sanctuary. Let your gracious spirit touch our guests with his love through our welcome. Lord, over all, be with members and friends of Zion at with us in worship this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Send your angels to guide and guard them, especially all who travel, such as George and Linda in these coming days, that they might come and go in safety. Bless our president, Congress, governor, state and local officials, as well as all who govern in other nations. Guide them to use their abilities and resources to work for liberty and justice for all. 
as members of your family, the church, we pray for our sisters and brothers in Christ, including at Riverview Baptist Church, as well as our sister congregation in the Florida, Georgia district, Peace Lutheran Church in Naples. Bless them. Bless us here at Zion also during this 50th anniversary year that we may grow in our faith in Jesus, in witnessing to him as our Savior, in serving others in Jesus' name in this community and beyond, and in caring for one another as people gather together by Jesus. You are the giver of all good and perfect gifts, and we thank you for all of your blessings. Prompt our hearts also to be grateful for the little things in life which we may take for granted, such as the oriental flavors of stir-fry, the quiet purring of a kitten, and friends who really mean it when they ask us, how are you? Finally, Father, we place all of our needs into your hands, and we do it by using the words your Son himself has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for being here today as part of our in-person worship. Thank you also to those of you who are joining us online. Next Saturday, we continue the series, I Want to Believe, But. We'll look at another reason people may give for not following Jesus, and then compare this objection to what the Bible says about God. We'll consider why people suffer when God is a loving God. And our theme will ask, a heartless God? Now receive the blessing. God go before you to lead you, behind you to protect you, beneath you to support you to befriend you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ and the power of the Spirit to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for our closing songs. <laughs>